All right, let's get to the scenario of Boeing 727, a commercial airliner that most of you are pretty well familiar with. Flown straight into the desert, and not as if it were any accident. Nope, not even close. All 100% on purpose. Crazy, right? By the way, it was not even a terrorist attack. This is one of the wildest scientific experiments ever pulled off to improve flight safety. But why smash a perfectly good plane? What could ever come out of that? In this video, we discuss the unbelievable story behind the planned crash. We'll look at how all of this came together, who thought it was a good idea, and what they learned from the wreckage. And now you're going to see how this ordinary Boeing 727 that once carried passengers turned out to be part of an incredible experiment. Trust me, the results, more surprising than you'd think. Stick around because this is a crash you won't want to miss. But first, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Now, before the crash happens, let's talk about the star of the show, the Boeing 727. It was introduced in the 1960s and changed the game for airlines all around the globe. It was made to operate on short to medium haul operations, making it the perfect system for flying between major cities. The 727 was to become the most popular airborne machine in the world. More than 1,800 were constructed and flown by several of the world's largest airlines. Design-wise, it was T-tail with a three-engine configuration and was capable of landing on much shorter runways as well, making it just about a very general workhorse. But by the late 1990s and early 2000s, even more efficient jets came. The Boeing 737 and Airbus A320, for example. They were gradually displacing the 727. So what was once a reliable plane began to be phased out of passenger service. But it still had one last important mission. Instead of scrapping the plane or turning it into a cargo vessel, a Boeing 727 was to take part in an unprecedented experiment. Its final journey wasn't going to be filled with passengers. It was going to be filled with cameras, sensors, and crash test dummies. This plane was soon to become part of one of the most scientifically significant crashes ever. But why a Boeing 727 for this crash? There was a good reason. The 727 was an ideal candidate it had flown so many hours that data generated by its crash would apply to hundreds of similar aircraft still in service. Its design lent itself to a stiff structure that could simulate certain safety features, and since the aircraft was already due to retire, it was an ideal candidate to be reused in pursuit of scientific inquiry. Crashing a plane on purpose is extreme stuff, but there's a lot of sense behind it. In real life, investigators only have a snapshot view of what went wrong. They have to sort through wreckage, black box data, and survivor testimonials to learn how to make safety better, but that's a pretty narrow view. What if, instead of crashing, we could plan a crash and collect all the data we need to make flying even safer? That's exactly what this test was set to do. The scientists who set the crash had such goals as understanding how various parts of the plane would act while crashing, how passengers could be better protected, and also how to prevent one of the most dangerous outcomes of a crash fire caused by exploding fuel tanks. There were three major goals, test seat belt and bracing performance, seat placement. When people are harnessed, it can literally mean the difference between life and death in a plane crash. But how do we know if the methods we are using presently are the best possible? Structural integrity of the aircraft. They were interested in knowing how much the fuselage would deform, where it would break, and how well it would protect its occupants in the case of a crash. Fuel tank explosion prevention. In many crashes, this impact ruptures fuel tanks and leads to truly horrific fires. They wanted ways to mitigate that risk. Among the big backers of the project were NASA and the Federal Aviation Administration, heavyweights in this sector. With those agencies on board, this was not one of those spectacular stunts, but rather a real scientifically endorsed mission to collect much needed information and increase air safety for millions of travelers. Crashing a plane safely is no small feat. This took months of preparation agencies working in tandem with one another and serious logistical engineering. The first decision would have to be the location. They sought an area that was remote enough so the crash wouldn't threaten any communities near but accessible for their scientific teams. After scouting around, they finally settled on a huge expanse of desert to crash into, deep within Mexico. This was the perfect scenario, flat, barren, and isolated. The modifications of the Boeing 727 itself followed next. It wasn't just a matter of flying it into the ground and hoping that would satisfy the requirements. For example, the interior of the plane was filled with crash test dummies, each fitted with sensors to measure the forces they would experience when the aircraft hit the ground. A crash, it seemed, required cameras inside and outside the plane to record the smash in every angle possible. This produced hours of clear, high-definition footage which scientists analyzed later. Fifty different instruments were spread throughout the plane to measure everything from deceleration rate to how the plane's structure deformed from stress. Perhaps most fascinating, though, was how the plane would be flown. It was piloted by human pilots who took off in the Boeing 727 and flew it to around 2,000 feet. But when it was on final approach, the pilots ejected and parachuted to safety, leaving the plane to be flown remotely by a chase plane. 
This ensured the aircraft was brought down without any form of error, it hitting the ground at a precise angle and speed to mimic an actual crash. It was a very delicate operation one that must ensure coordination between the pilots, engineers, and the safety team. One wrong move, and the whole experiment could have been ruined, but months of planning and preparation had come to fruition. Everything was ready, and the stage was set for one of the most anticipated crashes in aviation history. And this was the moment of maximum anticipation. The Boeing 727 flew over 140 miles an hour, landing on itself down into the desert. Over the rise near the dry lake bed, tension mounted, cameras rolled, sensors buzzed, then, impact. It thudded into the ground with incredible force. First, the nose of the plane gave way, and then the rest of the fuselage. The Boeing 727 was a sleek jet in an instant, but in the next it was nothing more than a mangled wreck. Debris flew everywhere, filling the air with dust. But this was no normal crash, this was a highly controlled event, and every second was caught on film. Inside the plane, crash test dummies were hurled forward, simulating the movements of real passengers. The seat belts performed well enough in that regard, so what it revealed, however, was that certain design ideas needed more improvement. Sure, bracing positions differed, but this information could lead a passenger directly into an area of weakness upon impact in real life. The fuel tanks are the most vital part of the experiment. In several plane crashes, the tanks explode on impact and create deadly fires. This crash, however, has seen results promising enough for modification done to the fuel tanks. There was no rupture seen and no fire broke out, a major success in the experiment. The real crash lasted only seconds, but the data it generated would be poured over for months, even years, and afterwards. So, when the dust finally settled, it was time to collect our findings. We deconstructed the wreckage piece by piece and scoured the data from the crash test dummies, cameras and sensors that had recorded everything. So what did we discover? For instance, the seat belt and brace position data were highly revealing. While clearly indicating the excellent performance of seat belts in general, on average, there was some latitude in the brace positions to minimize serious injury risks. Some of the brace positions were far more effective than others, which meant the way passengers prepared themselves for an impact was a whole new aspect of recommendations. The plane's structural integrity was further looked into. Weak points in the fuselage were exposed by this disaster, parts that were more likely to crumple or break apart under pressure. It led to considerable changes in the designs of subsequent airplanes, and stronger materials were placed throughout the plane's structure, where it mattered most to protect humans inside it. The final and most significant discovery was concerning fuel tank safety. The alterations that were introduced into the fuel tanks of the Boeing 727 27 through the experiment were sufficient enough to prove that it is indeed possible to prevent explosions from occurring at the moment when a plane crashes. It was an enormous step toward preventing post-crash fires, one of the deadliest elements that go with aviation accidents. But now you are saying, wait a minute, I saw that on TV and you are right. The crash was not only a scientific experiment but also a media event. Discovery Channel treated the whole experiment as an addition of curiosity, whereby millions of viewers followed the crash live. The television special took the viewer behind the scenes to months of planning, high-tech equipment, and the moment of impact in vivid detail. It wasn't just a dramatic event, it was a chance for education of the public regarding how far scientists go to make flying safer. Media attention surrounding this accident brought to light the amount of work that is put into making aviation safe. Even when something does go wrong, there is a team of experts working to make sure future flights are as safe as possible. So what was the long-term consequence of this innovative experiment? The data drawn from this crash was not left on a drawing board at a laboratory. It was acted upon to enforce real changes in the aviation industry. Airlines around the world have implemented the outcome to modify their safety standards. Seatbelt designs were upgraded to minimize impact in the case of a crash, thereby affording maximum protection to passengers. The brace position standards were also upgraded to maximize the chances of survival in case of a collision. And perhaps most importantly, fuel tank designs were overhauled. Thanks to this experiment, Planes are now equipped with more robust fuel tanks that are less likely to explode in a crash. This has already been saved and will be years ahead of us. The Boeing 727 crash experiment was never about breaking a plane so much as it was about saving lives, and that crash was living proof in every flight we all take today. It is so frightening to think that a catastrophe such as a plane crash was used for moving ahead. The Boeing 727 crash that we read about today was no tragedy, it was a triumph. These people learned so many things from this crash that millions of people fly safely on airplanes all around the world today. And all because one man, just one man, dreamed that he could do something bigger and better and make it happen. What do you think about the concept of crashing a plane for science? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to hear more stories about how science, technology and disasters have shaped our world, make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.